Lopez. From wherever you guys are at, in your shower, in the kitchen, on your way to work, at the gym, thank you guys so much for choosing to click this episode and listening to it today. I am so excited for today's guest. We're going to be talking business. We're going to be talking personal life, our culture, all good things with the one and only Patty Delgado. She is the brand owner of Hija de tu Madre, an LA based lifestyle brand to show our culture, Latinx. How are you today? I'm so excited to have you. I'm so good. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm, so stoked. Yay. I'm look, I've been obsessed with Hija de tu Madre. I even have my gorgeous little Latina Ah! earrings. With, on me today and you know what we're gonna do the tiktok we're gonna do why does everyone keep asking me if i'm latina <laughs> isn't it obvious yes. we're gonna do yeah. we're like little cute things but i love what you stand for i love the brand i want to know who patty is more and who came up not who but patty coming up with the idea of hija de tu madre because i know there's some type of personal tie to that and i would love to know that and for everybody to know as well like your vision and for standing up for Latin culture and being, I guess, like a voice and a difference, you know, in brands and kind of just giving some type of different perspective. Because I feel like everybody kind of loses perspective on who we are sometimes. And that's totally fine. But it's refreshing to see brands do that. So I'm going to give you the mic. Give a spiel. This is also our first time meeting you guys. We've been texting. We've been texting, but I'm obsessed. I love her so much, and I love the brand, but please, go ahead. Thank you, Jenica. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you summed it up pretty well, but I'm Patti Delgado. I'm the founder of Hija de Tu Madre. I'm a designer. I run this business, and I've been running it for almost eight years now. I started when I was 25, and at the time, I felt really called to create a brand that really spoke to my identity in a really authentic way at the time. Given, like, the political climate, I feel like there was just, like, so much hate towards, like, Latinos, specifically, like, immigrant communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I wanted to create a safe space for my community and in a way that spoke to me in a really authentic way. So I had this idea for a brand, and mind you, I had just gone fired from a job. I really only had, like, my final paycheck, Mm. and I had this idea for a jacket, and our first product is our Virgencita jacket, which is, like, a denim jacket with a sequin embellishment La Virgen on the back, and when I made that jacket for myself and I wore it, I just felt like damn, like, to me, there's nothing more American than denim, and to Mm. me, there's nothing more Mexican than La Virgen. Mm -hmm. So when you put these things together, like, that's the perfect composite of who I am. I feel so, like, complete. I feel so seen. And I feel like if you're walking around with La Virgen on your back, like, you're that bitch. Like, exactly, you're taking up space. (laughs) You're cool. You know what's up. Like, you... You know that girl is from somewhere yeah. that you might identify with. Like it carries with. some type of power or some yes. type of like like aura. Like when someone has I feel like we carry a lot of Latino specifically just um I, 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 there's no other word than power or like kind of attitude yep. that is very recognizable. Yes. And I and I love that you created that and what you what you felt what was like Where's your family from, by the way? Jalisco. Jalisco, okay. How was your childhood like, growing up Latino? Or Latina, like, in this space? Yeah, definitely. So I was born in Boyle Heights. My parents are both immigrants from Jalisco. And I grew up mainly in the Inland Empire, the 909. Mm. And, I mean, I was a majority. Like, I grew up in a mainly predominantly, like, Mm -hmm. Latino Latino area. area. Mm -hmm. But to me, it always, I was always kind of like, I felt like an outsider because I was a little rockera. So like everyone was wearing like G-unit shoes and like Mm -hmm. Fat Farm and stuff. And I'm just like wearing my disgusting Converse Mm -hmm. and my ripped up Paul Frank shirt. So like I felt like I was always that little rockera and my, just like my parents' problem child because Mm -hmm. as like immigrant parents, like they just watched too much Univision and I was just like, it's a different El demonio to them, you know yeah. what I mean? 
And I felt like I always kind of had that growing up. Like, I'm just a little bit different. I'm not really what my parents. Mm -hmm. I don't live up to their expectations, always kind of going against what they wanted for me. Mm. And I feel like that kind of always carried itself, even into my career and, like, the different life decisions that I've made. Like, there goes Bati, like, doing whatever she wants. But I feel like, do you feel like it's worked out for you? Oh, my God. 1,000%. Like, once you're... I feel like this is so bad to say, but, like, once you're used to disappointing your parents, like, nothing can hurt you. Yeah. Because you just live authentically and you live in service of you Mm -hmm. and not anyone else as much as you may love your family. And I think for any... Everybody else, not just family, I think stepping out of that, that box and even with your brand, it's like stepping out of the box and making sure, like, staying authentic to yourself, but being different enough and calling out to those people that are just as different as you are yeah you remind me so much of my sister jackie oh really she is definitely the rockera one she's like (laughs) the curl colored hair like she has a different color hair all the time but also my mom's like one of my mom's problem childs and that's okay i mean (laughs) there has to be there has to be one not everyone's meant to be perfect (laughs) or like the ideal child But what's the fun in that? There's like, you got to add a little sazon in these kids. Like you created me. So keep it interesting. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And I love your attitude and the way you see um, life and how you created this brand. How is it creating every piece? Like, is there an intention or is there like, you know, I'm again, I'm obsessed. So, and I feel like it matches now with this generation. Like, I feel like everybody's like getting in touch with like more with the la- Latinos. Cause I, cause you're right. There was a time where it was just like hated on or whatever. And then it just became glorified and beautiful, yeah. but still kind of forgetting what's going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's still a lot of immigration, there's still a lot of things that aren't okay in our culture. And all aspects. And I feel like with your brand, it's kind of giving people, at least people my age, I'm 20, ooh, 26. <laughs> I'm 26 and I kind of see it differently now. Like I, like it's, I don't know. But is there an intention behind, behind every piece and how you create? Yes. So I think the brand is like so much of my point of view. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, from a business standpoint, that's like probably not good because I'm just like way too involved, (laughs) way too attached, way too controlling with the creative vision. But it's I feel like everything that we come out with, it's like me kind of pushing things a little bit further. Like, wouldn't it be cool if Mm -hmm. we made a bilingual planner? Wouldn't it be cool if we made a bilingual card game? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always thinking like that. Like, wouldn't it be cool if? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I get really obsessive. Like, I have ADHD and a bunch of other little (laughs) things that keep me up at night. And I feel like that, like, just keeps me so obsessive about the next creative project. And I feel like I could have probably made way more money if I didn't care. Mm-hmm. Like if I just made cualquiera chingadera, like I'd be so rich right now. But I can't. I don't know how to do You're that. You're very detailed perfectionist. I'm so like it has to be in service of my vision and of my heart or I don't want it. Mm. I just rather not do it. Yeah. And it makes it, it makes a lot of problems, as you might imagine. Yeah. But I feel like I sleep better at night knowing that I did something that was in service of my purpose and of my creativity, and I can, like, stand by it. Yeah. Do you feel like it's always staying true to who you are? From, like, that little girl in the IE, like, you're still feeding her and staying true to what Bati wants differently the same way that her, you know, that you saw yourself different, your parents saw you different, and then with the brand, like, it's still feeding yourself. Yeah, and I think it's feeding the different um, stages and eras of my life. When mm-hmm. I started the brand, I was 25. Okay. I was, like, very confused. I, like, was really trying to find and reconcile, like, my own identity and my own place in the world. Like, am I Chicana? Am I Mexican? Am I Mexican-American? What the yeah. fuck is Latinx? What does yeah. that even mean? Yeah. Like, and I'm not 25 anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm 32 now. And I feel like the brand now... Is fulfilling like different needs of mine, you know, like I don't want to just be a t-shirt brand anymore, more cut and sew, 
more things that like really don't exist yeah. in the market. And I feel like that the brand is kind of maturing as I'm maturing. Exactly. You're evolving, the brand evolves. Yeah. And and we'll touch more into this when we after the break, but I do want to talk about obviously like the trials and the the good and the bad of starting a business. Yeah. Because I feel like it's inspiring, obviously, but I feel like pe people have a hard time of how much work and how much time and money it takes mm -hmm. because it isn't easy, it ain't cheap, and you got to have a good head on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Before we go on break, what do you feel like is the biggest thing that keeps you grounded? Mm -hmm. Like in your business and in your personal life? Yeah. Like is there something that you have to be like, okay... If this isn't right, Pat, Patty's not right or the brand isn't right. Yeah. I think for me, it's like <laughs> being around people that can humble you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not good for me to just rely on the comments and validation and the DMs. Yeah. You know, like as much as that like warms my heart, like that's not the whole yeah. picture. Yeah. Like I need, you know, my boyfriend works really closely with me and mm -hmm. he's also a big part of the brand. And like I feel like his honesty is always very grounding and like having someone to bounce ideas off with mm -hmm. because like I have ADHD. Like if no one stops me, girl. Yeah. I'll start 10 other businesses tomorrow, <laughs> like dead ass. So I think having so, like a checks and balances, like people that you can confide in and like keeping the circle really small and tight. Yeah, like I, I have very few friends and I kind of like to keep it that way. Yeah. You've seen like what benefits you yeah. at the end of the day and people to be able to tell you not to tell you to be able to tell you no. Oh, my God. Also, not. Having just yes people around. Girl, and as a Virgo, that is so hard. Like, how are you going to tell me no? Exactly. You're like, okay, but, <laughs> but why are you telling me no? Uh, and No uh, trouble. Like, I don't speak that language <laughs> of no. No, no is not in my but vocabulary. Even, even sometimes no is a good thing. Of course. Because then it's like, it's more fire. Exactly. Yeah, this is like, I have to learn a las malas. Yeah. That's how I live my life. Yeah. Like crash and burn, but at least I knew. At least I learned something. Exactly. <laughs> if you have a person that says no in your life, they're probably saying it for a reason. Doesn't yeah. mean you always have to listen, mm -hmm. but take it. Take the constructive criticism, and let's let's move on. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay, we're gonna go on break really quick, and we'll be right back to talk more with Patty. All right, you guys, welcome back. Okay, Patty, I have a brand myself, right? I have over comfort. And I've honestly been discouraged, right? And there's been ups and downs. And I kind of want to get your perspective because it's not easy as well. And I feel like it takes a toll on us personally as well, ha managing a brand because it is our livelihood and also just what we stand by. And I feel like when someone's so passionate and it kind of just goes, it just, when it just, when it starts to discourage you, you get discouraged in general in your life, at least for me. So what do you feel like? For you, what is like your biggest, what's your hardest and best moments? We'll start with hard. Right. Oh my gosh. I mean, there's so many hard moments. Like, I think even from just like personal, because I think when you run a business, like, it's not like you can just like check your feelings out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you, especially as like a business owner, like yeah. if you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, like, that energy is coming into the business like no yeah. matter what. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be really, really challenging. Like you, like there's been many times where I myself have been the problem, you yeah. know, as far as like my own mental health and that shows itself in the business and then I'll feel guilty and then I'll be on this like rumination spiral mm -hmm. of like, I'm not good enough. Why am I so depressed? Yeah, I'm a failure. So like that has happened to me many times and it's really hard to get out of that um but I think as far as like even the best moments I feel like for me it's about like reminding myself like what is it sounds so corny but like what success looks like or what's this like goal mm. and for me the goal is to be as creative as possible to be as interesting as possible and interesting doesn't necessarily mean like 
financial success or like creativity doesn't always mean financial success. And I feel so privileged that I have built this brand where I'm at a place where like I can be a bit more experimental, like Mm -hmm. I can try new things. And most of the time it usually works out, you know, and where are we going? What was no, the no, just like Unless your biggest like, moments and your your greatest moments. I'm and preaching over here. No, period. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. And I feel like, and this is to anybody wanting to open a small business or to oh, start a business, for it to be grand, like you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Mm. I feel like you'll have a lot of down moments wherever you start. Like yeah. it's however you envision or whatever, it's going to go you're going to have a lot of bad moments. It's not always going to be pretty rainbows and roses and everyone's going to buy it. And there's going to be times where people don't buy not one thing. Mm-hmm. And that is okay. There's It's a learning curve. It's I feel like it's all about, you have to have a good head on your shoulders. Yeah. Like, go ahead. No, like you hit it on the head. Like success or like starting a business and just expecting the growth to be like mm-hmm. so linear is a myth it doesn't work like that especially when you're like self-funding your business like success is not linear Mm -hmm. like there's just so many periods of disappointment after disappointment but I feel like to me and maybe it's easy to say this now that we're like almost eight years in it's like the easy part is starting yeah the hard part is choosing your vision again and again and again and again I get that I get that That because I feel like you lose it and you're just like, is this what I want to do? It is, but I want something to change. Yeah. So it's like rearranging that vision. And I love that. And also, not everyone's going to be agreeing or support. Mm-hmm. Have you ever, have you gone through that when you started out or even to this day? Like the closest people may be your biggest haters type thing. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like, I think when I first started, one of the things that I heard a lot of pushback was, was like, well, this is just so niche. Girl, ain't nothing niche about Latinos. Mm. Like, we are a majority in this country. And, like, we keep popping out babies every second. That's not slowing yeah. down. Yeah. Niche where? And so I feel like that was just, like, almost, like, laughable to me. Like, and I feel like that's kind of the attitude a lot about, like, multicultural. Yeah. Like, if you are bilingual, if you do something from a place of, like, culture and identity, they always kind of want to, like, scoot you over. Like, you're not mass market, you're not mainstream enough, but, like, hello, Bad Bunny, like, Mm -hmm. Beso Pluma. Like, there's so many examples of, like, artists coming from Latin America and being global and mainstream. And I feel like this attitude that we're just a minority and a niche is just so laughable, like, clearly, Mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like it's kind of a reflection of what that person is saying. Like, I feel, like I said in the beginning, I feel like Latinos are kind of on top right now. Period. Like, and as it should be, but it's still not addressing the biggest issues that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of understanding, again, this is what I love about your brand, is that you, out of the status quo, you're addressing whatever it is, that we have going on and and again for anybody starting a business it's little things like that like having the vision and keeping the vision and understanding that not everyone's going to agree and you have you have to be okay with that like it's going to be it's going to be a challenge and that's what I wanted to go to next is there any advice your biggest you've been in this for 8 years right and you can go, it could go anywhere. You can say anything. Advice. What is your, ad, for starting a small business and, or starting anything in general, I guess anywhere in life, you could start anything. But you know what I mean? Yeah. What is, what is your idea? Like, what are your three top, three top things? Like, if there's anything you've learned over these eight years, X, Y, Z, what are they? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I feel like, I know this is going to sound stupid, but like, Stop asking people for advice and validation. 
You know what I mean? Like, who cares? Because people, for the most part, want to protect you, and they're going to give you their opinion. Like, I already know how these Latino families are. Yeah. Like, they just want to, like, keep you close, and they don't want you to get hurt and fail. And, like, I think that has a lot to do with maybe, like, money wounds yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that, which is, like, a whole conversation for another day. But there's there's a lot of, valid like, validity in, like, kind of, like, no, Mija, don't try that. But at the same time, it's like, do you want to just keep like ruminating about like the what if, mm. you know, and just like doom scrolling like, oh, I wish I could be like this brand or oh, I wish I could be like this creator. Just do it. And like, aprende las malas. And I'm going to keep saying that, like, just learn on your own terms, yeah. like with whatever resources you have. Like I started my business with $500. There was no loan. There was no credit card. There was no like money from my family. I just took a risk on myself and it kind of worked out but I feel like it's not just enough to take the risk it's like choosing to take risks every single day yeah like with anything that requires discipline you just have to keep choosing future like what would be best for future you every single day and that's so hard yes oh that was so good Ah! no but it's for real and it's like and I, ta- I love to take it into personal life as well because I feel like whatever yeah. you start here reflects in your business. And like how you said, like worrying about your mental health and all that stuff, it's you want to make sure that you're feeding yourself correctly because in other words, how are you going to feed every other part? How are you going to feed the rest of your plate? Mm-hmm. Like it all starts with you and, you know, understanding that, yeah, you don't need validation from absolutely anybody. Mm-mm. I mean, obviously, okay, it's of course, of course, take some constructive criticism. Yeah. Take it in, sleep on it. At the end of the day, it's your decision. It's your life. It's your business. It's whatever you want to do and how you see fit for yourself. Mm-hmm. How is Patty doing today? Like with her business, how is she feeling? How's her little heart? What are you, yeah. where are you at right now? I feel really energized. I feel very excited about like what I've been creating and the energy that we're putting out. I'm really grateful for my team. I feel just so energized, Mm -hmm. Um, but it isn't always like that. You know, like sometimes I feel like so drained and so depressy and moody and it's hard to like, especially when you're so, at least for me, like I'm so attached to my work, Mm. which is probably like unhealthy, but like here we are. (laughs) Yeah, it's unhealthy. (laughs) Like mm, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know any other way. You know what I mean? Like I don't know how to just like clock out and check out. Yeah. So that like, like that leads to a lot of challenges, but I feel so energized and I'm really grateful. That's good. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the brand. I have a couple pieces, and right after this break, we're going to play, we're going to start, you know? Okay, well, let's just just go on break, and then we'll be right back, you guys. All right, you guys, welcome back. We are going to play a little game called Preguntas, made by the one and only Patty. Can you please just give us a little spiel about this? How did you come out with it, like, create it and all that? He's a little nosy. Oh, my God, (laughs) she's mozo. I know. Um, this is my baby. Her name is Preguntas. This is a bilingual conversation game for bilingual connection. I'm a little bit no sabo. <laughs> like when I go back home to the motherland, like I can hold my own, but there's a lot of complicated feelings and thoughts that I just like can't really express, yeah. especially when I'm hanging out with like my cousins and stuff. And to me, like I wanted to create something where like could kind of like help with those language barriers Mm. like what are some questions that I'd like to ask my grandparents if they were still alive or certain tios and Mm. tias but I can't really ask them because I have no sabo syndrome you know what I mean (laughs) and I love it (laughs) and so I like after a lot of thought a lot of design and planning and prepping we came up with this game and it's been so cool to see kind families talk about, especially Latino families, mm-hmm. talk about things that they like will never talk about. I love that. And each card, I'll show you guys right now, is has a question in English, Spanish, and formal Spanish because you got to come correct yeah. when you're talking to the señoras. <laughs> and yeah it's a good time people cry look i and i love that because everybody <laughs> loves to come on the podcast and shed a tear or two 
um, but I remember asking Patty, I was like, when the last season ended, I was like, I need that card game for next season. And I specifically saved it so I can play it with you. And to start and freshen, like, you know, fresh start with the creator. And I wanted to max out the vision with you. Like, I want to yeah. enjoy it. Okay, so here we go. Let's Are we do ready? it. Okay. It's just like asking questions, right? There's no there's no point system here. Am I getting a prize? There's no winners. <laughs> there's no losers. It, because it's just me and you, okay. we're going to play it a little differently. Okay. But there's four categories. Okay. I already forgot what they are. This one is familia. Okay. There's emociones. You're going to love these. Okay. I already know. Okay. There's I pink. Nosotros. Okay. And there is valores. Okay. And then there's two little dice. We'll kind of let you save that for another time. Okay. Um, which category would you like to start with? Familia, emociones, nosotros, or valores? Okay, does it have to do... It, those are the topics in those questions? Yeah. Okay. Mm, I will do... Uh, I'll do emociones. I'll do pink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to just, choosing. like, cheat. Like, put it over here if you want. I'm going to cheat and, like, pick out my favorite card because I just want to hear what you have to say. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Where is it? Okay. When is the last time you felt loved? ¿Cuál fue la última vez que te sentiste amado? Wow. Or amada. Um... Last time I felt loved. Wow, Patty. You, you see really want to, you want to, you really <laughs> want to do this. Um, last time I felt loved. Let me think. I did feel love yesterday because I was I well, this is a whole little story, but I was supposed to be filming the podcast yesterday. I was so excited. Then I woke up with food poisoning. Oh. And my friend surprised me and i was already feeling down because i had a lot of other things too like i had i had the food poisoning but then in the morning i had this crazy message and just it was just a lot going on so i felt like definitely emotionally drained surprised me with a bath gave me a little tea took care of me and like i was able to talk to with my friend and i realized like you know like have moments like that where i felt unloved and be reminded that i am loved by so, like someone that doesn't really, even really know what's going on in my life. So yeah. little things like that. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. God. But you win one point. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Do I get to ask one? Yeah, now it's your turn. Do you okay. Want what you pick which one you want to do. Okay. Um, I'll let, let's do let's do familia. Familia. Ooh. Okay. Pick anyone. Vibe, do you want to choose? <laughs> We will do this. I just want to shuffle. I mean, they don't really matter because they're all different, but... <laughs> do you? Okay. Vibe, can you choose one? <laughs> He's over it. Okay, I will do... I feel left. Okay. Ooh. Oh, my God. What was a typical day like in your family when you were little? ¿Cómo era un día normal en tu familia cuando eras pequeño? Oh, my God. Tell me, tell me. Okay, so I had a stay-at-home mom. Okay. And my dad worked, like, a really weird shift. He used to work at, like, Coca-Cola in, like, the 90s and mm -hmm. early 2000s. And so he would, like, be at work at, like, 4 a.m., come back, like, around 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, like, being a kid and having to be, like, really quiet because mm -hmm. my dad has mm -hmm. to sleep because mm -hmm. he's been waking up so early. And my mom would definitely – she held it down at home, fed us – took care of us she would play nintendo 64 with us my mom was so good at video games and then now <laughs> that i think about it it was so weird but yeah um and then i have two brothers so it's just like all of us at home trying to be quiet yeah yeah um but still being traviesos uh, you said how many brothers do you have i have two younger brothers two younger brother. oldest. Oh, so you're the oldest trauma yeah so you got like the worst of it kind of let's say not and a Virgo girl. Yeah. It's hard. It's like hard you felt nice. like, oh, uh, I'm not the oldest, but yeah. I see it in my sister yeah. very well. And I'm like, you know, I understand. I could see what 
you probably could have gone through. Oh also. my god, the first what is it called? Like the f- eldest daughter yes syndrome was so real. I feel yeah the pressure, the expectation. Yeah, uh, I feel that. All right, are we ready? Want to do another one? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, we haven't done. Valores okay, or nosotros. I would say let's do valores. Okay, you choose one and I choose one. Okay, go for it. Ba. Oh my gosh. I like, I for, I surprise myself sometimes. I look for like, the really? I'm like, damn, that's deep. Did I you literally write all of wrote that. Yes. All of them? All of them. Oh my God. <laughs> all of them. Have you played this with your family though? Like, your, yes. Yeah? When we first launched this, I like took over my dad's birthday party. I took over the carne asada. I'm like, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about our feelings. Good. And it was so good. My dad's been sober for a couple years now. And he was like opening up about his sobriety. And it was just like so cool to see like an older Mexican man talk about their feelings and their past. And of course I cried. It was amazing. Okay. Which one of your values has changed over time? (gasps) ¿Cuál de tus valores ha cambiado con el tiempo? One of my values that I feel like has changed over time. I think the valuing myself, does that count? Sure, yeah. Like I feel like I've slept on myself for a little Mm. bit. And the things that I used to care about, like I care about again. And I lost myself. There was a space of time where just like I stopped caring what, I was feeling and I was worrying about what one specific person would feel. And, or, and it can also be what everybody else was thinking. Mm. Like, I felt like, okay, if me worrying about myself isn't working right now, let me worry about other people and see if it works. And it still didn't work. Mm. Where am I happiest when I was valuing and worrying about myself instead of, allowing other people to control my narrative you know what I mean you're so wise you think so, so full of wisdom <laughs> thank you i can't wait for your book to come out well, you know what it's been on like it's been in the works i'm like i'll put this in my notes and maybe i'll put it in my book later but like I've, I've always envisioned of having a book yeah but then i feel like people don't really you know how like when you read a message like a text message and it gets misread mm. like you're in a, not in an argument, but it's like, oh, well, I read it that way. It seemed like that, but it's not that way. So I don't know. Having a book, maybe that's why I like the podcast because people can hear my voice and hear me and like see context. Me and express yeah. Me. I mean, but yeah. Wow. Okay. That was good. Let's do our last one. Yeah. Absolutely. And we could wrap up. Okay. This one is Nosotros. <sighs> <laughs> you're like, you're just, like, it's like, like tarot cards or something. I know, like, I just want <laughs> whatever one comes to me. Okay, here we go. You're so funny. I love it. I love the colors, too, by the way. Thank you. I love the vibe. It's summery. It's also very, like, it gives me, um, uh, I can't even what? say it. The, like, the tiles. Oh, Azulejo. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love it. Okay, anyways. Oh. Ooh. What's a lesson do you think I need to learn? Oh my God! ¿Qué lección crees que debo aprender? I love the Spanish. I love the formal too, by the way. This is such, that was such a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what lesson do I think you need to learn? Yes, mind you, today we first met, <laughs> you know, this is our first time communicating like this. Just yeah. giving context, you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm I obviously don't know you. We're we're new friends, and I have pieced together like what I think yeah. you are from what I've seen. And I feel like I would love. To, okay, maybe this isn't even advice or a lesson, but I would love to see Jenica in her villain era. Because you want me to be a bitch. Because you are so <laughs> sweet and so thoughtful and intentional. And I feel like you're so careful with your words. Mm. And sometimes I, you know, I'm a little older than you. And when I see people that are so careful with their words, I'm like, oh, it's because maybe she's a little bit of a people pleaser. Okay. And you don't want to hurt somebody. Okay. 
Um, but I feel like you're just so intentional and such a sweet soul. Like you can't like if somebody if somebody wants to be hurt by you, it's because they chose that. Right. Sometimes people choose to like misconstrue what you're saying because yeah. it fits their narrative yeah, of you. You're right. And I don't know. I would just love to see you in a villain era, bad bitch, <clears throat> unapologetic, fuck off. So if you guys see me be a bitch <laughs> these days, <laughs> if I'm rude, no, no, I'm never, I'm never going to be rude. Of but course. I, I feel like I can agree a little bit. I feel like I could, I, and I'm stepping, I don't want to say villain era, but I feel like I'm stepping into the space of my life where I'm just, I'm getting into my fuck it time. Like, there we go. There That's go. what it's called. Like, I don't really care if it's not feeding me good, babes, you got to go. Ooh. You know what I mean? So well I'm going to take that. But well Patty wants me to be a bitch. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, but I feel like, you know, I, it's because it's gotten me in trouble sometimes I, I, mm. that I've gotten a re- resting bitch face or really whatever. So I'm just like, let's just. No, you. I'm not like that, though. I No, you are this. I could just tell, like, you're just so thoughtful and careful. Thank you. Like, so pure. (laughs) I appreciate it. No, but honestly, girl, those games, that? (laughs) Oh, damn. That was like five minutes of therapy. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to take this. Imagine me taking to a carnaza. Everyone's all happy, and then we all end up crying. Yes. Um, No, but thank you so much. I love the intention. I love the purpose of this Cause I don't know, I gravitate towards that. I loved, I played it last season. I did Amiga Circle, or whatever. Yeah, but I love this as well, and I feel like it is so important in our culture now to speak about how we feel. Ooh. And I feel like that's the mistake that we all learned growing up that it wasn't okay, or not that it wasn't okay, but it just felt very taboo and scary. It was very fearful. So I appreciate you opening that door and giving people that time to have little therapy sessions and to be able to talk about their feelings because I feel like it's important. It's so important to talk about your feelings, guys. Um, Well, so with that being said, Patty, I wanted to thank you so, so, so much. You are an inspiration. Again, I love the brand. I'm close friends here babes we're in that (laughs) chat i'm here i'm like yes "Yes, absolutely they have amazing products they have these gorgeous little earrings i have my little hefa uh door hanger outside right now like please don't come in um my hefa necklace the halter tops if you guys please have the chance or opportunity please check out hija de tu madre support buy this game if you feel like this is calling towards you and your family and you feel like This is going to be that perfect way to step into that era and time of your lives to be able to have therapy sessions with your families. Please, please do so. I feel like that is so healing. Patty, you were amazing. You're great. You're a beautiful soul. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Or please give your socials as well so that people can follow. Yeah, thank you. I am so grateful. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to you. Please check us out, ihelatumadre.com. And just support Latino owned. Latino owned everything, yeah. not just my brand, but like mm-hmm. really, exactly. we need our community support. And thank you guys. I, I, that and I'll piggy, piggyback on that. I feel like Latinos have really big support systems. Like I don't know. I feel like everyone kind of just comes together and just this is this is what we're standing for. And I love that as well. Yeah. So um, yes, you guys, make sure you guys check hija de tu madre. Get connected. Make sure you guys like, follow, subscribe. The podcast, Overcomfort Podcast. Let us know who you guys want to see this season. And I will see you guys next Tuesday.